You respond to a 36-year-old female patient who has drowned. The ambulance approaches the scene. You're in the ambulance, you and your partner. You see bystanders carrying the patient towards your ambulance. You get out of the ambulance, you bring your gear. You approach that patient. The patient is unresponsive, but has a pulse. What do you do next? By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what to do. Drowning is a final stage of the patient when they are submerged in water for too long. It is in a respiratory impairment where the lungs themselves have water in them, which leads to the patient becoming hypoxic, obviously. At the same time, why does this happen? Drowning most commonly happens from two reasons, and I'm gonna throw in a third one. So we can have a tired or exhausted swimmer, whether they're coming up or maybe they're trying to get to the shore. That can happen. What else can happen? We can have drugs and alcohol at play, right? Another thing is panic and anxiety in the water. So these are the things that are most likely to have a drying occur, but please do not forget this. Even a good, great swimmer can panic in the water and have an event. I want you to always remember this. You know when you're drinking and water or, or a drink might go down the wrong pipe, you, you feel, people think you're choking for a second and you kind of cough. That is your body trying to preserve itself and protect you by spasming your larynx and vocal cords, okay? That spasm helps the least, 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 least tiny amount. Maybe it gets through, but most likely it spasms up and you're good, right? That's what happens when water goes down the wrong pipe. You move on and continue your meal, right? So remember with a drowning victim, imagine the amount of water that's going through that process. So what's happening is your larynx is continually spasming, spasming, and it doesn't stop until eventually when they're drowning for so long, eventually, finally, it can't take it anymore, it just relaxes. And then that's where we're entering real drowning. Hypoxia and hypothermia are two big concerns with someone who is drowned. So the biggest thing you wanna do when that patient comes out of the water is first you wanna check for their responsiveness. And then we wanna attack the hypoxia and that hypothermia. And I'm gonna show you exactly what to do in a moment here in each situation, even cardiac arrest. So stay tuned for that. Now with these things, start ventilations early. Cover the patient early. Now, what about this? There's something called the diving reflex. The diving reflex, basically, give you an idea. If you jump into a body of really cold water, there's a, a diving reflex that happens where your heart rate actually slows down. This slowing of, the, of your metabolism and heart rate in patients who are victims of drowning can protect their major organs, like for example, the brain, where in a normal scenario, when someone goes into cardiac arrest, they don't have as much time, you get more preservation time of major organs with cold water drowning victims because of this diving reflex. Our primary actions as we approach this drowning patient really comes down to, are they responsive? or unresponsive. Let's say you go to a patient and they're responsive and they have a pulse and they're breathing on their own. They can even manage their own airway. If we see that and they're in that category of they may have almost drowned, right? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep them warm. We're gonna provide high flow oxygen to the patient and we're gonna consider, is there, could there be any other trauma here, right? And I have some more bonus notes for you in a minute on this one. But think about, could there be any spinal precautions, depending on where the patient is. Now, the most likely scenario with a drowning patient, they're going to be unresponsive. They're not going to be breathing with a severe drowning patient. They're going to be unresponsive, and the question is going to be, do they have a pulse or do they not have a pulse? We'll talk about cardiac arrest in a second. This is unresponsive, but they have a pulse. They got a pulse. We got to focus on our hypoxia, and our hypothermia, they consider any spinal issues would be the third. So look here, 
We're gonna open and clear our airway. We're gonna place an adjunct and we're gonna start ventilation with oxygens immediately. We're gonna keep them warm. And again, consider spinal. These are our big things here. And now let me, I'm gonna talk about cardiac arrest. And I got some more notes for you. I just wanna to touch on cardiac arrest. Let's say your patient comes to you, they're unresponsive, no pulse, no breathing. We're gonna follow the same steps under the unresponsive with pulse, focusing on hypoxia and hypothermia, spinal precautions, but obviously they're in cardiac arrest. So we gotta first thing, start CPR, attach an AED. Then we're gonna do our ventilations, right? Keep the patient warm. So all these things are covered here. But remember this, your patient who's in cardiac arrest from drowning, they have that diving reflex. So if we get a ROSC, return of spontaneous circulation, ROSC in this patient, they may be fortunate enough to have a great outcome because the organs may have been preserved. So I'm gonna keep in the back of your mind. These are my biggest takeaways to remember, and then we're gonna go back to that case, that 36-year-old female. First, 24 hours to weeks after, patients can still have complications from the water they took into their lungs. So make sure these patients get transported. On scene, try to ascertain if drugs or alcohol were at play in this drowning, if possible. It will help the doctors later on in hospital. Don't forget folks, this is a medical trauma call. It's kind of a little bit of both, so make sure to get a GCS. When you first pose a patient, think, what might a GCS might be in those first few minutes? So you get a baseline GCS. That way, again, later on they can track, wow, today their GCS is up. That's good, okay? And then also, don't forget, you gotta fully expose the patient. Yes, hypoxia, yes, hypothermia, yes, spinal, but what if they got, you know, there's bleeding involved and we don't expose. So don't forget about other things you're so focused on drowning. So like any trauma, fully expose the patient. And finally, the SpO2 level is most likely gonna be low. Yes, cause hypoxia, but also cause the, the, the way that the blood is moving throughout the body because of the hypothermia. Not gonna be much circulation out here at the fingertips with pulse socks. So that's something to think about too. And we're back to our 36 year old female who's drowned. She's unresponsive, being carried to you, but she's got a pulse. What is the first thing we're gonna do? The very first thing we're gonna do. We already checked for responsiveness because we know she's responsive. We even checked for a pulse. But what haven't we done yet? Nothing with airway, nothing with breathing. That's where we're gonna go first. So in order of operations, we're gonna open the airway then we would clear the airway. So let's say there was a vomiting or there was blood in the airway or most likely there's gonna be water in the airway. We gotta clear that out a little bit so we can ventilate, right? But don't spend too much time doing that. You wanna make it clear enough to get your first ventilations in. You wanna get ventilations in as soon as possible and oxygen and all that. But clear it good and then go ahead and make your ventilations. Now, with this case too, we've opened, we've cleared, we gotta insert a adjunct, then we're gonna ventilate with oxygen. Great. So now, while well, one team member, let's just say we're on scene here and we just brought the patient down for a second, or maybe we bring it on the stretcher and we're starting to do this as we're moving into the ambulance, right? These are all scenarios depending on where we find the patient, right? One provider can be ventilating while another provider can be exposing and looking for other injuries all at the same time, right? Depending on how many, depending on how many people we have on scene determines how fast we can get some of these things done. And then obviously packaging the patient, keeping them warm, get them to a warm environment. So on a drowning call, keep the ambulance warm, right? We don't want the AC blasting in the back of the ambulance, right? So these are some things I'm thinking about as I'm going through the patient care. And that's how you treat this patient. The first link in the description down below is what I give to all my students who are getting ready for school in school right now or getting ready for their national registry exams. It includes videos, quizzes, and access to ask me questions in our private student group. There's gonna be a video on the screen right now. Click that, you're gonna learn even more.